Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us on Business Incorporated. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwago. On the show today, Nigeria Mortgage Refinance Company seeks approval for $1.4 billion debt program. A rating agency Moody says South Africa funding to suffer from weak rand and high yields. Plus, Glencore plunges after U.S. subpoena regarding money laundering. Let's begin with the markets now. And here on, in Africa, on the NSC index, the NSC index tilted to the red zone at intraday, down 0.13 percent. And uh, South African market was up 0.03 percent. Egypt was up 0.18 percent, and Kenya closed 0.02 percent down on Monday. And in the Middle East, it was a mixed bag. Abu Dhabi was down 0.16%. Saudi was also down 0.52%. However, Dubai and Qatar were up 0.33% and 0.50% each. And in Europe, stocks were slightly higher in early trade, though lingering concerns over global trade appeared to cap gains. Meanwhile, the world's biggest commodity trader, Glencore PLC, tumbled the most in two years as its African troubles escalated dramatically after U.S. authorities demanded documents relating to possible corruption and money laundering. Glencore has been asked to produce documents with respect to compliance with the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act and United States money laundering status. status, status. The documents uh, relate uh, to the company's business in Nigeria, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and Venezuela from 2007 to the present. Well, my colleague in Frankfurt, Conrad Bosen, has details of this and more. Hello, Conrad. Good afternoon. Good to have you again today. Good afternoon, Jimmy, and hello to everyone in Nigeria. Right. Well, Glencore's shares slide 10%. Falling further after a subpoena from U.S. Department of Justice, it's been a tumultuous year for Glencore, mostly due to challenges linked to its business in the Congo Republic. What will this now mean for the world's biggest commodity trader? Well, definitely, Chimmy, this is a big blow to the company. Uh, any company that ever got subpoenaed that way knows that the Americans are dead serious about this. If Glencore fails to provide the evidence that the Department of Justice has demanded, it already can be fined. And of course, if Glencore fails to prove that its uh, business uh, since the year 2007 has been clean, also, this act, the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act in the United States, allows sanctions and high fines. Up until now, the investigations by the Department of Justice uh, were considered to be uh, focusing on not the company Glencore itself, that, but on a businessman that uh, Glencore used to de do business with, uh, namely in Africa, the nations you mentioned. Uh, but now uh, it turns out, after this subpoena came out, that Glencore itself is also in focus. That's, of course, a huge blow to the company, which is the largest uh, commodities trader worldwide. It's also, uh, as it is based in Switzerland, uh, the largest Swiss company in terms of revenue. And, uh, You've mentioned that uh, Glencore has been going through troubled times, so these problems are not really new. The company often has been criticized for operating in parts of the world that, are, that have a reputation of being prone to bribery and corruption, that also uh, Glencore uh, ha has not treated um, many of its workers in the mines well, that it has fought um, quite uh, violently against uh, unions. And of course, here in Europe, given the fact that Glencore has its legal seats in a part of Switzerland that's considered a tax haven and also on the British island of Jersey, which is another tax haven, um, the reputation of this company uh, was a bit shady and many people have uh, thought for quite a while that it was only a matter of time that the American authorities, which are considered to be the strictest in terms of anti-corruption fights, even with companies that are not based in the U.S., would, you know, put their focus on Glencore. Well, let's see how that company gets to uh, deal with this um, recent development. Let's look at um, 
the trend in the market movement, global market movement today. We've seen the Chinese stocks going into a tailspin today as turbulence gripped equity markets in Asia, which sank to nine-month lows. Now in Europe, though, stock markets managed to decouple from this and climbed. Why is that? Are investors more confident that the trade disputes with the U.S. can be settled? I have to say the confidence, the confidence is not uh, really uh, large um, in terms of the American um, trade war threats. It's just that um, the focus of the Americans seems to be more on China at the moment. The am amount of tariffs that the Americans have imposed against China is much larger than the amount of tariffs imposed against Europeans. Also, the Trump administration seems to think that uh, the threat uh, to lose technology leadership um, is much more elaborate and much more intense when it comes to uh, Chinese competition compared to European competition. Also, I have to say, um, you know, in terms of uh, market jitters, the Chinese market is more prone to nervousness, to investor angst than the European ones after the markets on the Chinese mainland in Shanghai and Shenzhen both have entered bear market territory, you know, after having lost more than 20%, investors are simply ready to be more um, uh, sell-off, in sell-off mood than they are here in Europe. What's more, um, as you can see right behind me, we, we are seeing a bit of a recovery here uh, on the equity market in Germany. Of course, there's a bit of a relief today here that uh, Germany has not lost its government after only about 100 days or so. The um, coalition conflict that has been uh, keeping markets um, under suspense for two weeks has ended. So there is reason for a bit of optimism among uh, stock market investors today. Interesting, Conrad. Well, let's um, look at some, some corporate deals there coming in today. That's France's large bank, Societe Generale buying uh, Germany's commerce banks, equity markets, and commodities businesses. Is this a good deal? And what does, does this mean for the German banking sector? Mm -hmm. Whether this is really a good deal is a bit difficult to say, as uh, Commerzbank and Société Générale don't say how much the French are paying for this part of Commerzbank's business. Um, so the stock market reaction is not really clear today. Um, what this means for the banking sector is that the German banks are becoming a bit more domestic again, focusing more on the basic business of uh, banking. A Commerzbank, just like Deutsche Bank, wants to focus more on its German customers, corporate customers, many of them coming from the mid-cap, uh, uh, medium-sized um, uh, German business sectors. On the other hand, the French are simply more able to do risky and complex business as they have, you know, not the same problems with their trading departments compared to Deutsche Bank or Commerzbank. Société Générale is able to focus on its domestic market in France, but is also able to operate in a very complex and um, um, risky and capital intensive uh, trading businesses like derivatives trading, exchange-traded funds trading. Uh, also for Société Générale means that it's been uh, getting another foot in the door of German business. Um, Société Générale says itself that it's, uh, this is a very important step for its German setup. So uh, the German uh, financial market sector is becoming a bit more French also. All right. Thank you very much for your time, Conrad. Enjoy the rest of the day.